In this series, we talked about almost every major component that a PC requires in order to work, except for one. Today, we're going to be talking about computer components, specifically storage. Now, this one's going to be a bit different, as there are many different storage devices that you can use in your PC. Firstly, we have to figure out what exactly storage is. Computer data storage, often called storage or memory, is a technology consisting of computer components and recording media used to retain digital data. It's a core function and fundamental component of computers. If we go back to the human body analogy one last time, storage is much like the limbic system, the hippocampus, the amygdala, essentially the part of the brain that stores memories through your life. Except in a computer, this is done much more efficiently. Let's talk about each type of storage device and which one might be best for you. The first one is a hard drive. A hard drive is a high capacity, self-contained storage device containing a read-write mechanism plus one or more hard disks hidden inside a sealed unit, also called hard disk drive abbreviated to HDD. These drives work similarly to how old record players used to, except instead of a needle on vinyl, hard drives use electromagnets to write data onto small spinning disks. Each magnet has its own disk to write on, and each disk has small grains which house information in the form of bits. The magnet converts these bits using its electromagnetic field to change the magnetic state of the grains, essentially dictating the bits to be a 1 or a 0. Now, I understand how complicated that seems, but all bits can only be a 1 or a 0, so essentially, as you write data on a hard drive, it's deciding which pieces of information are 1s and which are zeros. As you search for that information later, the hard drive spins at around typically 7200 rotations per minute in search of what you're asking for. Your standard hard drives will spin at about 7200 RPM, or rotations per minute. Slower drives will spin at about 5400 RPMs, and the fastest drives around spin at, currently, 15,000 RPM. The faster your drive can spin, the faster it can search through your folders, Word documents, and essentially anything you have installed onto them. However, the downfall to hard drives is because they are a component with moving parts. As you use them, they will wear out. Next, we have solid state drives. A solid state drive, or SSD, is a non-volatile storage device that stores persistent data on solid state flash memory. Solid state drives actually aren't hard drives in the traditional sense of the term, as there are no moving parts involved. An SSD has an array of semiconductor memory organized as a disk drive using integrated circuits rather than magnetic or optical storage media. What this means is, while hard drives use disks to store information, SSDs use flash memory, which is a kind of memory developed to retain data in the absence of a power supply. This was actually developed to ensure that BIOS settings weren't lost when you shut your computer off, but was also very useful for the inner workings of a speedy storage device. Getting all of that out of the way, solid state drives are essentially faster hard drives. While hard drives can potentially spin at 15,000 rotations per minute if you buy the highest end drives, a solid state drive will read and write much, much faster. However, there are some downfalls to SSDs in that they can only read and write so many times before they die. Not only that, but the cost difference is kind of big when it comes to SSDs. As of 2017, a 1 terabyte 7200 RPM standard hard drive will cost about $40 to $60, depending on what brand you're looking for, whereas a standard 1 terabyte SSD will cost around $260 to $500, again, depending on the brand and type. This moves us over to M2 SSDs. These things are much like regular SSDs, except instead of being plugged through the SATA power and SATA data cables, an M.2 SSD will be plugged directly into the motherboard. This makes things very fast because of the speed limitation that SATA ports have. See, your average SATA port caps off at about 600 megabytes per second, whereas some M2s have a real-world maximum throughput of 31.5 gigabytes per second. No, I'm not even kidding, that's fast as hell! However, the same problems that we had with the SSDs compared to HDDs still apply. M.2s can only read and write so many times before they die. As well, that one terabyte SSD that we looked at before, the one that was around $260 to $500? Yeah, a one terabyte M2 goes for around $288 to almost $600, which, to be honest, isn't a huge leap, but is still a bit of a money jump. Again, this also depends on what brand you're looking for. The last type of storage device we're going to talk about are hybrid drives. These things are kind of cool in that a portion of them are solid state, and the rest of them are hard drives. If you're looking for a sort of in-between, this is a great way to go, especially for a budget. A 1 terabyte hybrid drive can go from $60 to $100, and the benefits are kind of astounding. See, the drive itself will not typically let you decide which section you want to put your media. Take Steam, for example. Let's say you install Steam onto your hybrid drive. 
As you use Steam, the drive will move that program over to the solid state side of the drive to ensure the programs you use the most will run the fastest. However, the flash storage part of the drive is typically quite small, so not a ton of programs will be able to be utilized by that portion of the drive. Also, the programs you download will start out on the hard drive side of the hyperdrive, and until the drive learns what you use the most, you'll be using the slower side. This kind of sucks because most if not all of these hybrid drives don't allow you to switch the data that you want over manually. This is done automatically, so you'll definitely need some patience. Okay Barry, this is a lot of good information, but how do I know what kind of storage I need? How would I decide what's best for me? Well, here's how I would go about it. If you're looking into getting a gaming PC, and you have a bit of money in order to do so, I would suggest getting a small M2, just to fit your operating system. Your programs and files could then be stored on a regular SSD or hard drive. Me, I have my operating system on a regular 1TB SSD, and all my games on a 6TB 7200RPM drive. If you need cold storage, then a slow 5400RPM drive with a lot of storage space could be for you. If you're on a bit of a budget, I would suggest a hybrid drive for your operating system and programs, as well as a backup hard drive for your games if you can afford it. And that is Computer Components Explained. I may do a more advanced series on these parts as well as some new ones down the road, but we'll see as time goes on. You know, until this video, I never actually knew how cool hybrid drives were. Go with me on this, but I imagine it'd be like connecting California with Oregon. California's all fast and constantly moving, and Oregon's all slow and mellow. You know, I think that'd be a pretty solid state, but a hard drive.